What up? How's it going, crew? Let me know if you can see me. Let me know if you can hear me. What's up, Eric? What's up, Juice? What's up, Tanya? What's up, Dale? How are you? What's up, Mary? What's up, Chuck? All right. Let me get finish getting situated here. And um, just let me know if you guys can see me and hear me okay. What's up, Tammy? How are you? See me, hear me. What's up, Leisha? How are you? Plar, what's going on? What's up, Patty? What's up, Jeff? All right, mixing it up a little today. You guys know I like to mix it up. So in today's mix up, we are, let me actually get the Instagram crew in here as well. Let me flip around here real quick. Instagram. What's up? Can see me, hear me, all good, all good. What's going on Instagram? How you guys doing today? Welcome, welcome. All right, so here's what I'm doing today, all right? Actually haven't done this in a while. So we get questions on it all the time. I know we have a lot of wizard users out there and we also have a lot of people looking to be TRW Design Wizard users. And just kind of want to know what it can do for them. So, believe me, in this training, I'm going to show you some of the stuff you can do. But it is literally going to be maybe 5% of what the wizard can actually do for you. Okay, because as many of you know who have the wizard, it, we did three week long courses on the wizard. And still couldn't cover everything. So, that's a good thing. But... You can always learn something. So what this is going to be kind of a super basic overview of not even everything, just showing how to do some basic stuff with the wizard. And especially for those of you who have just recently got the wizard and kind of what I would kind of start with when using the wizard. Does that make sense to everybody? So the wizard, yes, and I know I'm going to get this question a bunch. So... The Wizard 6, just to let you know, the Wizard 6 is still in the works, of course. Um, we are probably, the, the stuff we've been working on for so long, uh-oh, I got a bad connection. The stuff we've been working on for so long, some of it, it's just not going to work, and it was kind of a little above and beyond. So we're probably going to have to pull that out of it, but it's nothing that I ever mentioned anyway, so it's nothing that you guys would actually miss. And it, I thought it was kind of a little bit of a benefit, kind of made some things a little bit easier, but at the end of the day, we had so many different issues with different versions of Corel Draw crashing that it isn't going to be worth it, all right? So, like I said, all of you guys on Instagram, make sure to head over to YouTube because you're going to see much better videos and much better layouts and see my screen a lot better on YouTube, okay? So link in the bio on Instagram. I'm going to flip you guys around a little bit, then I'm going to hop on TikTok for a little bit as well. But if you want to see the training good, head over to the YouTube channel, The Rhinestone World. All right? All right, Um, just quick before we get going, how many of you here currently do have the TRW Design Wizard? The wizard has changed everything I do with graphics. That's awesome, Mary Alice. Love to hear that. Um, any chance you could show how to make a dam? Um, Barb, yes, remind me. You're saying with the smart fill? Yeah, that's not bad. All right. Um, I think that's what she's talking about, Pilar, when I do the smart fill sometimes, and I always used to call it to build a dam. Um, all right, you guys ready to get going? So those of you who don't know, I guess, so for those of you who don't know, what the TRW Design Wizard is, it is our software that we built onto CorelDRAW to make your life way easier. Now, again, it's not an introductory software. It's not a free software. It's not an inexpensive software at that. However, I think it is a software if you're in this industry, in this business, or looking to get into this business, it will more than pay for itself as long as you understand the concept of time is money. And I'm pretty sure we all understand that by now, right? Time is money, okay? So think about it this way, all right? How much time are you worth? So 
if a design took you five minutes to make versus an hour and five minutes to make, you just saved an hour of your time. If your time is worth $20 an hour, guess what? Every time you create one of those designs, you're saving $20, right? Which in turn, you create 10 of those designs and you're saving $20 on each one, obviously do the math, you just saved $200. So, big thing we always talk about, time is money in this industry, whether it comes to layering designs, whether it comes to cutting, whether it comes to weeding, what all of that stuff, okay? You always have to calculate in your time involved. So, that's a really, really difficult part when it comes to software as far as, okay, the software is pretty expensive. Is it going to be worth the investment because it's going to save me that much time? And that's what I'm going to show you a few things just to see. All right. So Instagram, I'm going to flip you guys over here and you're going to have a tough view here, Instagram. It's going to be kind of far away. Okay. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be kind of far away, but Go to YouTube and you'll be able to see everything a lot better. Got it? All right, let's rock and roll. Um, time is expensive and you can't get it back. I agree. All right, YouTube, let me get you guys. Is that much better for you, YouTube? You don't need to see me, right? YouTube, would you rather this view or the full screen view? I'm assuming you want the full screen view because you're going to be able to see me clicking the buttons and see everything a lot easier, correct? All right. Yes, full screen. Okay, got it. All right, so here's the deal. Um, yes, the bundle version of our software, because as you can see, I'm working in CorelDRAW right now. This is the TRW Design Wizard, okay? So I'm working in CorelDRAW and the TRW Design Wizard right now. All right, so, uh-oh, I just lost my screen. Can you guys still see me? One of my screens just shut down and I lost all my comments. Where'd all my comments go? Give me one second. Let me pop out my chat here and move it back. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me know if you guys can still see me. That was weird. That was super weird, but we're good now. You guys see the screen? Okay, awesome. So, I'm going to run through a few basic things off the start. So, one of the first things I'm going to run through here is... Bobby just released a brand new font on the website. And I'm going to use that font. And, oh yeah, just going to say this. A few of the designs that I'm going to be creating today, I see a lot of you are green in here, which means a lot of you are probably all-star members. Some of the designs I'm going to be creating here today, I'm going to drop in the all-star member community board for free designs for you guys. Got it? So if you are an all-star member, a lot of these designs that I'm gonna mess around with today you will get for free let's go all right so the new font is this guy right here it's the picnic font okay so it's got different little clipboard in it so it's got a kite and a um a piece of cake and a picnic basket and a lemonade and a watermelon and a and a grill, and some uh, ants carrying the watermelons, and hot dogs, and hamburgers, and a little... So, this is just a cool little font. As you guys know, we like to... And it's a nice script font as it is, but we always like to add extras to our fonts to make them unique and make them different. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a super quick design out of that font. You guys ready? Let's do it. So... The two arrows, and I'm going to try to explain the different buttons that I'm clicking on when I'm within the wizard. Because I know a lot of you here don't really know about the wizard and what it is. Okay? So, check it out. I'm going to click the two arrows top left corner. That opens up my font area. Got it? 
Now within my font area, there's my super picnic font. So I'm gonna go, um, do you wanna do pit master or grill master? I'm just gonna make a, a decal or a shirt. So what would you prefer for a barbecue? Pit master design or grill master design? I'll go with the first one that I see five votes on. Let's go. What you got for me? I see the very first one is Grill Master. I see the second one, Grill Master. I see the third one, Pit Master. I see Grill. I see Grill. I see Pit. Uh, grill's our winner. All right, Grill Master it is. So, check it out. I'm going to go to text. G-R-I-L-L. -L. And let's enlarge that. Let's use the Super Picnic font. So there's my grill. And again, any of our text, you can move around, you can make it taller, you can make it shorter, you can adjust it, whatever you want. Now, if I wanted to, I can take the G here, and this is the way you do it in Corel Draw. Highlight this, hit the down arrow, and I can say, ooh, I got a grill with that as well. Or I got a spoon with it too. So, do I want to use the grill? Maybe but maybe not, so let's just see. And all of these have additions as well. Look, the L is gonna have a little ant on it or it's gonna have an apple on top of it. So you can kind of pick what it is, all right? So we got grill and then we're gonna come over here and go M-A-S-T-E-R. And you can see this is a nice script font as well, right? Now that we have that, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I think I want to do something like this. I'm going to do this and I want, I don't know if I want to arrange it this way. I may. How the G's coming down there. So then I'm going to make grill a little bit bigger. I'm going to arrange this like this. And then I'm going to fill my two areas. And those of you who have never been to my, one of my trainings when it comes to designing and stuff like that, and I think you guys like this, let me know. I like to, to talk about my thoughts. So, as, so you guys can hear kind of what I'm thinking in my head. And does that help you guys when I say that stuff? When I'm, instead of me just moving stuff around, I'm assuming it helps you guys. So like here I say, okay, well, grill, I wanna edit that a little bit. I'm gonna hit the B right here to break it apart. And then I'm gonna move my L's in a little bit. Got my R there and my G there, okay? And then for master, I'm gonna do the same thing. I hit the B button, okay? And I'm just going to adjust this a little bit just to make it fit nice. That looks good for me right there, okay? So highlight all of that and you'll see when I go to wireframe right here in the wizard, the two empty boxes, I need to weld this together. So I'm gonna come up here and hit weld. And now that's welded together. And then grill, I'm gonna weld that together. Back to my enhance frame and there we go. Now, the reason why I didn't weld them all together is I didn't want them to be stuck together in case I wanna move this at any point. Does that make sense? Now check this out. This is what I love about our font. Our Paige draws all these fonts and Bobby helps her put them all together and, and check this out. If I hit the explanation point, okay, when I'm within that font, it's going to be an explanation point, right? When I hit the at sign, it's going to be that. When I hit the number sign, that. The money sign, that. But when I hit the percentage sign, there's kind of my picnic blanket. And then I hit the, um, what's it called above the six, the little arrow? It's pretty sweet right there, isn't it? It's got all the ants carrying the food. So if I wanted to, I could, and not that I'm necessarily going to put it on this one, I could shrink this down and have all the ants kind of carrying the food right under the text of the design. And that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So I actually want to do this one and I'll show you the different things that are in this. So we got the ants, then we have this is 
the kite there. Okay, so that's a clip art that's in it. Then we have kind of the um, little banners. Then we have, ooh, I'm gonna use that. My utensils for the grill. Then we have the piece of cake. Then we have the watermelon. Then we have the picnic basket. Then we have the lemonade. Then we have the, a different grill. So those are all the different clip arts that are built into this font. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab this grill here, and then I'm also going to grab my utensils. And I think they were nine. Now that I have both of these, what I can do is, where do I wanna put this? Okay, well I'm gonna put this right over on the side here. And maybe I wanna knock that out a little bit. And I can shrink it down a little bit as well if I want. So all of this is easily adjustable, right? And I'm probably good. See, the thing I don't wanna do is I wanna fill that area nicely. So I'm gonna go to about right here. And I'll show you how we're gonna fix this other part. Because we're just gonna, it's one button in the wizard, which is nice. And then the utensils, we'll just throw off to the side here. So I'm looking at that, and now I'm gonna do a version two. And this is what I was talking about, why I did not want to weld these together. Because now what I can do is I can say, all right, well, what if I did this a different way? What if I did grill a little bit smaller? I don't think there's gonna look that good. Kind of moving around, deciding where I want it to go. I could put some stars and stuff in there, which that could actually, that could actually work. Let's see if this works. So watch this. I'm going to go here. I'm gonna grab my utensils and I'm gonna throw those here. And then I'm gonna grab my grill and I'm gonna flip my grill around. So I'm just gonna hit the mirror. So let me come up here and I'm gonna flip that. So my grill's facing the other way. See that? And now, oh, I could put the ants in there. Um, how do you make a star? I can show you. So on the left hand side over here, okay, you'll see I'll go to the shapes and I'm gonna go to basic shapes. Got it? And then within those basic shapes, I can come up here and all of these are my hearts and things like that. But the one that I want is obviously my star. And then I can just draw a star real quick. But let's use something out of the, I would say we probably use something out of the clip art to fill in this area. Let's use something out of the clip art. So let's find out what other, because I could, and let me just show you, maybe if I, I could throw three stars there, something like that if I want. Um, will the wizard work with the silhouette design? Um, it will work with a, um, ooh, that's a good idea. I like what someone just said there. Um, it will work with the cameo, yes. What if we just threw the utensils into this spot and then hold on i saw i saw you guys type it hold on i'm gonna look and see so the utensils kind of fill in here but then i'm gonna search now this is not going to be um this is not going matt can you remind us how to invert an image again later yeah remind me later heather and i'll see what you were talking about there um this is not going to be in this font pack, but let me do something real quick. I am going to come over here, and this is just gonna to be to make the design, right? I'm going to grab a, hmm, which one do I wanna grab? Maybe, we aren't gonna really have as much a mug out there. 
How about this guy? We throw a beer in there? What do you guys think? And then what I'm going to do with this is going to be cool too. Um, can you move? Yes, that's a great question. Okay. Can you move one of these utensils? You can. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult. So here's what I would do because these are kind of welded together. So what I would do to move one of them is I would click on the Smart Fill tool and click on those and then delete this and then weld them together separately, okay? So now these are both their own items. So now if I wanted to, I could say, you know what? I only want one of my utensils in here and I'm gonna throw it right there or I want both of them, but I want them kind of staggered straight. Everybody see how I did that? And again, that's just using a tool in Corel in the wizard. All right. All right. So I'm liking that one better. Let's do it. Now, if I wanted to make this a decal, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Okay. And you guys tell me which one you think looks better. Um, yeah, I can do it without the beer bottle as well. hundred percent. Yep. So, but I'm going to do one with the beer bottle. So you guys will get two designs. So check it out. And then let's make my grill a little bit bigger here. I'm going to highlight my entire design. Now, if I made it white right here, like a sign vinyl. Okay. And then I wanted to see it onto a car window. Check this out. I come over here to my mockups. I go to TRW. I go to car decal front window. I click on that. And there it is on the back window of a car. It's pretty sweet, isn't it? Um, I'm going to do that right now, Heather. I, okay, I, I see what you're talking about. I'm going to basically do that right now. So, I think this is what Heather's talking about. Now, if I want to take this design... I'm going to duplicate it so I can make another without the beer bottle. I just copy and pasted. So I'm going to go copy here and paste over here. I think this is what you're talking about, Heather. Highlight it all. Weld the entire thing together. Okay. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom right corner and I'm going to do magic boundary. Right over here. I'm going to do a 0.2 magic boundary with a contour. You guys see what that did? Then I'm going to double click, delete all of these inside areas, and then highlight it all and do back minus front. Turn that white. And now let's add this on the back window of a car. And boom. So I want to know from you guys, because it's always kind of a mixture, but which, which decal do you like better? The left one or the right one for a car window decal? I know which one I prefer. But let me know. Which one do you like better, left or right? It's pretty sweet, isn't it? And the mock-ups are ridiculous. Now, here's what I personally... I personally, for a decal, like the right one better. Okay? I think it stands out more, especially on the tinted window. But I like the left one for a t-shirt. So, the left one here, if I made it larger, and I wanted to throw this onto a men's t-shirt, okay, I could just take this 
and I'm going to weld that together, come over to my mock-ups, I'm going to do men's, and I'm going to do a men's t-shirt front, click on that, and there it is on my men's t-shirt. And then if they want a yellow t-shirt, boom, there it is. How sweet is that? And now, I mean, you can, yeah, you can make the t-shirt whatever color you want. If you want it blue, if you want it purple, if you wanted a black t-shirt, what you would do, change it to a black t-shirt and change that to, let's say, white text. So all of that can be changed to whatever you want. Pretty sweet, huh? And you can, yes, I saw somebody ask, could, could you do it on an apron? Do you guys want to see? I love doing stuff on the spot. Do you want to, do you want to show, do you want me to show you how you can put an apron into the TRW Design Wizard? Because I see a lot of you asking about an apron. Let's do it. I'm not scared. Let's go. Um, yes, the TRW Release 65 font work, or TRW Release 65 works for 65% off this font. Alright, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go cooking apron. Um, let's just do cooking apron. And I'm just going to try and find, let's do a white one. I'm just going to try and find a decent looking cooking apron. All right. So looking at these, I could do it where it's on an actual dude or the girl or here. Um, do you want it with an actual person on it or just the blank apron? We can do it either way. Let's go, I'm looking for a good image. Um, this guy here has got it going on, let's go. All right, so I'm just going to copy, come over, go to the wizard, and paste. So, this isn't a, a perfect image right here. Like, obviously it's pixelated as crap, okay? I'll do a blank one too, but this is just to give, kind of give you an idea. Now, here's what I would do. I'm not going to do a color changing one on this. I'm going to show you later how to make a color changing one as well. But here's how you would put something like this within the wizard. Okay? Should it be a good uh, size file? Yeah, well, just depending on how, how pixelated you want the image to be. So again, this is. But check it out. Uh, and within the wizard, I'm going to go to Mockup Creator, okay? And down below here, you're going to see Add Products, okay? I want to add a front product. Got it? And I want it to be, let's say, let's say the width of this apron right here is, let's just say it's 13 inches, okay? So that's the full width of the apron. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my design placement. That's going to give me this red box. So basically I'm telling the software that this red box, okay, from the left side to the right side is 13 inches. Don't pay attention up here. I'm telling the software that it's 13 inches. Got it? So, now that I've told the software it's 13 inches, I want to add this to, let's add a new folder. I'm going to call it the apron. We'll call it aprons in case we add more. Okay, there's our aprons and apron men. And then what I'm going to do is highlight the entire thing and I'm going to save custom product. 
So, it says product has been saved under apron, aprons men front. Got it? Now that I have that, I'm going to come back to my design here. And I'm at 10.8 inches right now. That We knew that was 13 inches the full width. So I'm going to make my design about 11 inches. I'm going to come over to mock-ups. I'm going to go to the very first one, which is called apron. Apron, men's front. And it even shows me the little image right there. See that? Click on it. And there it is, perfectly on my design. Is that not sweet? So, if this is an apron I use all the time, I don't have to go find it every time. It's built into the software now. Okay? So, what I mean by that is when I come over and say I wanted to put this design on the apron. I'm going to go to 11 inches. All right, and I'm going to turn it blue this time. Click on my little design over here or my little guy with his apron and boom, there it is. And it drops it perfectly into that spot every time. It's sweet, isn't it? Okay, now let's go to the next level. What if we were doing this design okay and it were glitter well i just come over here to my products i say i want to use caesar glitter and i want to use some red glitter check it out now you see all of the glitter it's a perfect representation of the glitter heat transfer vinyl but i'm going to go to the mock-up again and now the mock-up has the glitter as well so if you're making a glitter shirt for somebody, rhinestones, whatever it is, it's going to show what that material looks like on it. And then even better than that, I can come over and click on this little money sign and check this out. I'm not sure if you guys can see it good, but I have, it's a 7.4 inch tall by 11 inch wide design. I have $1.52 worth of Caesar Red Glitter Heat Transfer Vinyl, and that is with a quarter inch margin of waste around it. So every single thing that you do, you will be able to price it out perfectly. <coughs> I agree, Swanky Glitter. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> now, you put reflective, if you put reflective heat transfer vinyl, on my apron, now we're talking. As you guys know, that's my material, reflective. All right, any questions on that before we move on? Pretty sweet, right? And that did answer your question, I think, Heather. Is that correct, with the inverting the text to do it like the decal? Like that right there? Sweet, all right. Now, you know what? Since we're on the mock-up topic right now, I'm just going to show you real quick how you would do a shirt as well. So, let me do that real quick. Wow, this was going to be my last topic, but because we got to it early, let me just go ahead and finish off the mock-up side of it. So, check this out. For the mock-ups, I'm going to bring in, I don't know, let's bring in something different here. Let's go, we got a pillow in here. And this pillow, oh, this one I already did, dang it. I wanna do one from scratch. So, we're gonna do it from scratch, I'm gonna show you guys. So let me see if I can find, real quick, give me one second. I'm gonna do a, I just wanna, basic JPEG of a pillow and I just need to find one here so give me one second if not I'll just grab one online just to show you how easy it is to do it um, here we go I think I got one let's go back to Corel and let's bring this in here is this gonna work yep okay this is it so everybody look just so you don't think that I'm doing anything or it's any kind of trick or anything. So check this out. 
When I go to wireframe, all you see is a JPEG image here, right? When I click on different colors, it just stays the same, right? Nothing changes, okay? I wanna put this pillow, it's basically a throw pillow. I wanna put this pillow into the software, okay? So here's how I would do that. I'm gonna come over to my mock-up creator within the wizard, and I wanna do an inside contour boundary. So if I were to do that, it's gonna do this, and it's not going to hit it good with all the angles. And the reason why is because of all of the shading and, right, and stuff right here. Do you guys see that? So there's gonna be specific times where you may have to do a trace. There's also gonna be times where you don't have to do a trace. And I wanna walk you through both of them. That's the whole point of this, right? So this one, because it's not going to hit it perfect, and let me show you again, create auto boundary. See how it did a lot of the boundary pretty good, but then when the software saw that thicker area here and the darker area, it didn't hit that perfect. So there is kind of a little cheat method you can use, and that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna come over and use my B-spline tool, connect off of this, and I'm just tracing right along the top of this light area here. Go back one step, and then once I get that, I'm gonna come around here and connect it. Okay, looks weird right now, but stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Now, for this part, I could come in and adjust all of these nodes, but that would take way too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete most of the nodes, add a couple nodes, and see how I'm just kind of forming it along with it on the bottom here. And there we go. So what do I need to do now? I just need to take this and then the part that I drew. So there's the part I drew. Hold shift and this, and then weld those together. And bam, we're good. Yeah, that's the cool thing, VY, right? How many of you here that have done stuff with me before would have beast-blinded the entire pillow? Most of you probably, right? But even though it didn't trace it perfect, it did, let's call it 70% of it perfect, right? So just fix that extra 30% and that's going to save you, think about it, time, right? Now that I have that, highlight both of them and I'm going to hit cut out color change mock-up. So watch what this is going to do. It's going to cut that out and everything looks the same right now, correct? Does everybody kind of agree with that? Everything somewhat looks the same, but it's not. Watch this. If I wanted it to be a yellow pillow, now it's a yellow pillow. Now it's an aqua. Now it's pink. Now it's purple, now it's orange, and it still has all of that shading and everything in it. So I basically turned it into a color changing pillow. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into the software so it's there forever. Cause I don't wanna have to do this every time, right? Yes, it, um, could you use a background yes you could Kathleen however however you wouldn't be able to it wouldn't be color changing then so you could use like remove background BG that website I always show you guys but that it wouldn't be a color changing pillow now that I have this let's just say this pillow is I don't know a 16 by 16 okay so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna go 16 and I'm gonna go create design placement I'm gonna go edge to edge, knowing that that to that is 16 inches. Got it? Um, the wizard works with anywhere from Corel Draw X7 all the way to the newest version 2021. Highlight both of them. 
I'm gonna come over here to, and I think I have a pillows category already, do I? Um, no, I don't, so I gotta create a new category. Add a new folder, pillows, okay. And I'm gonna call this the throw pillow. Highlight both of them and save custom product. And now that is saved into the software forever. Pretty cool, right? Now, okay, what does that really do for me? Check it out. I am going to, I'll show you where I'm going to pull this design from just so you can see. So on the website, if you go to designs and mini packs, we have a mini pack that a lot of you guys have probably never seen before, and it's the baby stats packs. This one's probably my favorite one, okay? So you can change around the text to whatever you want, all right? So we got that there. I'm going to use this one here. So let me come over here, open a new page, and just drop this in here. And this is the baby step, one of the designs, the lacrosse design from that baby stats pack. All right. So what I'm able to do with this pack is, and this is a big feature of the wizard on the right hand side here, I can hit find text and let's say it's not Jackson. Let's say it's my daughter. Let's say it's Madison. M-A-D-I-S-O-N. Last name would be the same. Okay. And then... Her birthday is May 22, 2006. Oh, and then let's just say she was born on a Friday at whatever time and whatever pounds and ounces. But you can see, all I'm doing is literally just typing it in on the right hand side and it refills all of this. Got it? Now that we have that, I'm gonna make this design. Let's go about 13 inches. I'm gonna go to my mock-ups. I'm gonna go to my pillows. I'm gonna go to my throw pillow and I'm gonna drop it on the pillow. And there we go. How sweet is that? How easy is that? Instagram, let me zoom in and show you what it looks like. Right? Anything you want, as many items as you want, you can put into the wizard. And then, yes, can you change the color? Yep, now it's a yellow pillow. So maybe their team colors are yellow and blue. Obviously, they don't have team colors when they're born, but maybe you're a Michigan fan, right? <laughs> it's pretty cool isn't it yes that's our baby stats pack it has all different sports in it and then we have versions that are not sports as well obviously all right everybody feel pretty comfortable with that good 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 all right now i'm going to go to one more and i'm going to show you adding a shirt into the wizard real quick so here's just a gildan shirt design i'm going to show you two different ways to do this okay and let me just just so you guys can see there's nothing special going on here that i'm hiding if i go you can see it has a white box back back behind it everybody see that so when i click on different colors it doesn't do anything oh yes i did promise them hold on let me flip around here hey instagram instagram I need to go. I promise Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. What the hell? Tic Tac. I promise Tic Tac I would be on by 12.45 and it's 12.46. So I got to head over to Tic Tac. But Instagram, head over to YouTube and you'll see it better anyway. All right. We'll see you in stuff. All right. I got to hop over to... I got to hop over to um, Tic Tac real quick. So let me flip over. What's up, guys? I haven't seen you in a while. I see you now. Or you see me. 
All right, let me hop on TikTok here real quick. All right, boom. And let's go here. The rhinestone world. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I can't add the grill one, Dawn. Only I'll add the pillow. I can't add the grill one just because it wasn't my image. But the pillow one is on one that I took a picture of. Um, all right, hold on. Give me one second. But yes, I will. Let's go live. And we are going... CRW Design Wizard Software. All right. Boom. Done. And... Let's go live. Got it. All right, TikTok, what's up? So, TikTok's joining in the middle. People are casting you add a pillow mock-up. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll add uh, the pillow mock-up to the All-Star goodies. Yep. So, as you guys can see, this mock-up right here has a background image. When I click on different colors within the wizard, it doesn't change colors. There's nothing special about this yet, right? Watch what the magic, watch, I'm flipping the camera. Watch what the magic of two clicks can do, okay? All right, click number one is going to be under the mock-up creator tab. Click number one is going to be create auto boundary. So, boom, the boundary is done. See that? One click. The wizard just did that. My second click is going to be cut out color change mock-up. Boom. And done. Two clicks. Watch the difference. Let me put that blue background that we had before. That looks a whole lot nicer, doesn't it? Looks a whole lot nicer there, right? And then, check it out. It's color changing as well. Now, do you guys want to see real quick how to take this to the next level? I'm going to show you how to take this to the next level. This is sick. All right, you guys ready? So, one thing I don't like about this is this right here. See that? The tag doesn't change the color of the shirt. Everybody agree with that? So, let me show you what we can do. What I'm going to do, right after I did the trace, okay? Watch this. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to choose my B spline tool. And I'm going to go and draw and trace around. my tag. And then with that, I'm going to hold shift and click the shirt. So I have just what I drew and the actual shirt. I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to click on intersect. Okay. Intersect. Now what that did, I'll show you. I'm going to get rid of this, but you'll see. Oh, that it basically just cut out the tag all right so now that i've done that i'm just going to copy that tag i hit Control c so i basically copied it to my clipboard and i'm going to go back and cut out highlight them both cut out color change mock-up and then Control v and check this out Boom. Look at the difference. Boom. 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 Looks so much better, doesn't it? So now every one of my mock-ups, when I change the colors around, is going to have that white tag in there. Which looks, obviously, a lot more realistic. Um, no, you can't do that in the Silhouette software. This is actually all stuff built into our software that we created. 
is pretty sweet. I know. I'm telling you guys, just the mock-up creator part of our software, we have so many people that buy or purchase our software just for the mock-ups and just to do mock-ups. Right? All right. And then, yeah, can you show what it looks like on a product? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch. Now, I'm going to call it a green shirt even though it's not. I'm going to call it a green shirt even though it's not. So watch what I mean by that. I'm going to come over here and my design width, let's just say the width of this shirt is, I don't know, let's say the width of the shirt or the design is going to be 11 inches. So I hit create design placement. I put this onto the shirt to where I think from the left side to the right side is about 11 inches, which I think is about right there. Highlight them both, come down to, I'm gonna add to my men's category and we're gonna call this, um, we'll just call it Gildan Live. Gildan Live. Oh, I can't spell Gildan. Gildan Live. Got it? Highlight them both and save custom product. So that just saved that product in men's under Gildan Live. Now, back to our design, which is this one. We want the t-shirt version, which is this one here. And we're just going to do it in black. Highlight my design. Let's go to my mock-ups. I'm going to go to men's. Do, do, do. Men's and... Guild in live. Boom. And there we go. It's so freaking sweet. And then I can change it to a pink shirt or a yellow shirt or a purple shirt or a blue shirt or whatever you want. So easy. Anything you want. You can put tumblers in there. You can put t-shirts in there. Anything you want. Yes. All right. We got it. We're good. Comfortable with that. Okay. Let's get into another one. Um, I'm trying to think of a design to do that will kind of relate for to everybody. Um, I gotta save my throw pillow for you guys. Let's save that. Let's get rid of here. Oh, I want to save that one too. Okay. Um, let's go with, let's make a creator design. Let's make a creator design. And it's just literally going to be like, because everybody in here is a creator, right? Or we could do craft or create. I, I like creator sounds better. Let's go creator. So I'm going to go hashtag creator. And I played around with this um, the other day. A lot of you probably saw a video on it. And I'll show you how I made that, okay? So with this design right here, okay? I want to use, and you can honestly use any type of font that you want. Um, let's just go with, I want kind of a somewhat thicker font. So I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit. No, no. Ah, that font. You know what? I think this is the one that I used the other day. This DOSIS. D-O-S-I-S. It's probably a font on Google Fonts. So I'm going to go with this DOSIS font right here. And I'm going to make this, let's just say, we'll start out at 9.5 inches wide. Okay? Now, if I wanted to tighten up my spacing a little bit, Here's what I could do. I could just come over here and click text spacing and tighten this up a little bit. Okay. If I wanted to adjust just one letter in the font, let's say, okay, that E and the A are getting a little bit too close. I can just click on text spacing, come down and grab that little spot and move just that one letter. Did you guys know that you could do that? where you can just grab one letter and move it, but I didn't break it apart. And what I did is I clicked on my text spacing and I can move just one letter like that. Pretty cool. So once we have that, 
I want to do kind of the same look. I want to do kind of that inverted look. So, and I want to make it a little bit taller. Let's go about 10.5 inches or so and two inches tall. I like that. I'm going to come down to, again, the bottom right corner where I have magic boundary. Click on my magic boundary. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's go a little bit larger. Let's go 0.25. Magic boundary. Boom. Double click. Get rid of those inside areas right there. Highlight them both. Back minus front. And our design's ready to go. So if this were a white glitter going on to a women's shirt, so on a women's shirt, I would probably be about 9.8 inches to 10 inches. Come over to my mock-ups. Let's go to women's and let's just do a women's burnout shirt front. Boom. Obviously it's white. So we're going to come over here and go to a black shirt. And there we go. And there's our white glitter. Look how easy that was. pretty sweet isn't it and then again how much do I have in cost click on my money sign for this it's only 2.8 inches by 10 inches I only have 48 cents in glitter heat transfer vinyl cost for this design not bad at all right yeah she'll be able to watch the recording of this right after it's over on YouTube and how easy of a design was that to make, right? Let me, and I'm sure you guys are gonna want this design, so let me just go ahead and save it quick. And I'm gonna export them as SVG files, that way everybody, even if they don't have the wizard, get it. So we're gonna go, this is the creator design. I'm just going to call it Creator Design Live. Boom. All right. Everybody, everybody go with that. All right. Let's, oh, yeah, let's go. What if you wanted to add rhinestones just as an outline around it? Okay. I could do that. Here's the way I would do it. First thing I would do is, I mean, honestly, I could come over to my magic tab and I see some of you saying if you've just created a stone outline, that's going to do that. But what I could do, because that has an offset to it, but the reason why is because of my contour spacing here. Because it always runs off of your rhinestone area over here. So what if you moved your contour spacing to 0 0.06? What does that mean? Okay, that's going to do it too right there so if i wanted it to be real close what i could do is go to my place and fill i'm going to create a boundary around this like that right there i'm going to do one island to the outside island fill clear my paths and there's my rhinestone design and then obviously we can pick colors. Let's say this were going on a black shirt and you wanted it to be, oh, I got to get rid of my boundary. And you want it to be a light pink glitter with crystal rhinestones. Again, highlight my design, go to my mock-ups, women's burnout shirt, simulate stones, change it to a black shirt. And there we go. And what's cool about this is when I zoom in, all of the rhinestones are simulated as well. And then you can bring it, yes. So, and that's the biggest thing with our software, Krista, and what most people do is, um, how can I get it to tell me the cost of the stones and, oh, no problem, watch. So if I highlight both of these and go to my money sign, there you go, Heather. Look, I have 154 SS10 crystal rhinestones, 52 cents. And then I have 48 cents in translucent pink glitter heat transfer vinyl 
for a total of one dollar in this design 52 cents in stones 48 cents in vinyl the biggest thing heather and probably what's happening for you because watch it i mean it like breaks it down breaks it down watch I'm going to go citrine stones there. Oh, let's just go crazy with it. Watch. I'm going to go blue. And then I'm going to go aqua. And then I'm going to go um, yellow. And then I'm going to go green. And then I'm going to go purple. And then the last one we'll do at an orange. Okay? So, highlight all of this, click on my money sign, and look at that. I have 21 aquamarine stones, 8 cents, 20 blue zircone, 8 cents, 27 citrine, 10 cents. Um, oh, I left one crystal in there somewhere. One crystal, 38 light siam, 19 tanzanite, 28 TRW blue, and then I have 48 cents in glitter heat transfer vinyl. And boom, I have a dollar and seven cents in cost. Now, here's the question with something like this. How many of you here would make this design? Let me know. How many of you would do this design? And what would be the issue? What would be the issue with doing this design? Can anybody tell me? Hundred percent, you could do it, but think about it. You need one template, two templates, three templates, four templates, five. You need six templates. You need to brush in all six templates. Okay, so you have to think about your time involved in it. Does that make sense to everybody? So I think the design looks cool, right? It looks good. But you have to think about I know you see that extra crystal I left right there. But you have to think about your time involved in this, right? It's going to be a lot of time involved doing all of these different ones and brushing in all the different colors. Now, if you had a cams machine and a six color cams machine, one, two, three, four, we have exactly six colors, that would be perfect. No problem at all. Because it would run it just like it would one. And you could do, yeah, I agree, you could do painter's tape, Dawn. That would probably be your smartest way to do it. So like Dawn's saying, if I were to do this and I had to do it with a template, I would throw a piece of painter's tape and I would go painter's tape from, well, look, blue, look, it's actually even blue painter's tape. Check it out. So I would do painter's tape from there to there. Then I would move the painter's tape and grab my second color. And I would go there to there. Then I would move my painter's tape and grab my third color. Move my painter's tape and grab my fourth color, my fifth color, and my sixth color. That would be the smartest way to do it if you are using a template. Because then you would only have to cut one template. Who cares if there's a couple extra rows of yellow versus green versus blue and so, and so on. But it could look cool, right? It could look cool and it would definitely be a lot smarter to do it that way. But it's still going to take a lot of time. It's still going to take a lot more time than one. Like I would be able to brush this one design in in 15 seconds. For you to do six colors, just the changing out the stones and everything. It's gonna, probably going to take you at least five to ten minutes to brush in each transfer. Make sense? Sweet. All right. Um, yes, I know. I'm sure you guys would want the rhinestone version as well. I will get it. Don't worry. All-star members, I'm on it. I'm just going to give it to you as this color for all of you All-Star members in the SVG file. But as you know, you can do whatever you want with it. So let me export. 
and we're going to call this the creator stone design. Boom. Got it. Man, you all-star members are making out today, aren't you? Okay, let's move on. Um, can you show? Yes, I can show that. Um, if I were, so, some of you guys are asking, what if I wanted to do like a sports team or shirt, okay? Um, what does creator stand for? Just basically what you guys do. You, I mean, it's, it's bigger for like <coughs> social media stuff if you're a, uh, a creator if you're creating videos if you're cr I mean technically you guys are creators right you're you're creating um, unique t-shirts and decals and so on yeah of course no problem so let me show you I will go to do you guys want oh man the eagle one will eat them up won't it all of you wizard users yes let's do it hold on I gotta find it the eagle one how many of you guys here let's be honest when you saw me the first time do the eagle design and a lot of you at trade shows this is true i know when you saw me the first time do the eagle design that was kind of the game changer with the material it, and it is and i'm going to show you it's it's next level yes it is it is it's sick this is this is one of the things that really sets the wizard apart right okay so i have eagle soccer here okay all that is is the impact font all that is is the impact font okay i have this eagle design it's just a clip art vector of an eagle everybody with me so here's what i'm going to do first thing i can do is i'm just going to create a knockout design so watch i'm going to highlight eagle soccer weld it together i'm going to take my eagle here move it right on top of this design okay and does that look good to you guys right there let me know does that look good um, which part of the sublimation, Don? What do you mean, as far as just selling the supplies and stuff? <clears throat> it's tough to read this, right? It's tough to read it. So watch this. Highlight the design. I'm going to go over here and I have my knockout design. So it's called the, the KO button right here. If I came over here and just clicked that one time... Look at the difference of that. What a difference that looks, doesn't it? Let me show you both of them. We got this one. We got this one. Okay. You tell me which one looks better. Click on KO and it's done. Which one of those two look better? The left one or the right one? It's a freaking no-brainer, right? Yes, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. I can't see the questions here um, on TikTok, so head over to YouTube. It's literally a one-button click. 100%. Yep. Now, this is where it really changes. This is where it really stands out. Watch this. I want you guys to tell me how long it would take you, first off, in the software that you're using right now, okay? Give me a heads up, real quick. Everybody tell me what software you're using right now. What software are you currently using? I see Design Space, Design Space, Wizard, Corel, and Wizard. Design Space, Wizard, Corel, and Wizard. Design Space, Make the Cut. Design Space, Illustrator, Silhouette. 
Studio, Studio, Corel and Wizard, Silhouette, you, Silhouette, yes, Sure Cuts A Lot, Design Space, Smart Design, Design Space, Silhouette, okay, Design Space, Inkscape, so check this out. In the software that you're currently using, not, not Wizard users, okay, because you guys kind of cheat a little bit, right? How long would it take you to create a perfect knockout like this right here? Give me the, how, how many minutes would it take you in your current software to create a knockout like this? Let me know. Forever and ever, amen. <laughs> okay, I see on TikTok as well. So I see 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. I'm pretty good, 10 minutes, at least an hour. Couldn't do, couldn't do. Less than a minute, and there are some, yep. Five to seven minutes, not sure, 30 minutes or so. Okay, and this isn't huge. So if you have, for example, like an Illustrator, Illustrator is going to be something where it's probably not a ton of different clicks if, as long as you know what you're doing and creating the outline and simplifying and stuff like that. All right. Now, same question I have for you guys is how long would it take you to, you guys know what I'm about to do, right? Create a design like this. I want you to create a knockout. I want it to make the knockout, but then I also want it to add the stones with perfect spacing between the knockout. How long is that going to take you? Probably a little bit longer, right? Yes, it added the stones right away. So, it doesn't matter what software you have. If you just have Adobe Illustrator, you're not creating this in under probably, oh man, I couldn't even imagine how long. Even with Illustrator. Because it's not adding these paths. It's not adding the stones perfect. I mean, obviously in design space, you can't even do it, right? But... To create that, because the really unique thing about this is the inside part of it is a thinner line, but then the outside part adjusted for the stones. That's a great question I was hoping you would ask. So, a question just came in that said, what if the stone sizing was different? Let me show you. And that's a great question. So... If the stone sizing was, let's say, SS6 stones. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to SS6 rhinestones. Highlight my design. Go to my magic tab and I'm going to do a stone knockout. Okay. Look at that. The software automatically adjusted to the stone size. So, if it's SS6 stones, it made this spacing set perfect for SS6 stones. If it's SS16 stones, it'll adjust it. So, the software is looking at all of that to simplify and automate it all for you. So, you don't even have to think about it. Because I can probably guarantee there's not one person in here that knows the perfect spacing between for SS6, for SS10, for SS16, and for SS20. Because I'm not going to lie, even me doing this all the time, I don't know. I have a cheat sheet. Right? Pretty sweet, isn't it? Um. Yes, yeah, so there's always going to be some slight editing on it. So, and I'll show you. Let me see if I can find a spot here. Like down here. 
What I would do with this spot right here, honestly, I would just move. So there's some spots, that one I wouldn't. This one I would probably just move as well a little bit. Um, here, quick little move. I mean, I'm going to probably be, when I do something like this, a minute into creating the design. And then that one probably about there. And then what I do, and I'll show you how it does it, I click here, I select the same color, and then watch what happens when I hit merge overlaps on these two. See what it does? It takes both of them, and it just finds the center of it. And now all of them are perfect. So, if I wanted this design, let's see, I made a little, if I wanted this design to be black glitter and green glitter, and then I wanted the stones to be crystal rhinestones. Highlight my design, go to my mock-ups, throw it on my shirt, and there it is. And what's really cool about it is they say, you know what, I want it on a black shirt. You can change it right on the spot, watch. White glitter, right? Or, yeah, let's just do that, watch. White glitter, black shirt, and then I can even come in here and add some sparkle to it as well. So now when the customer sees the mock-up, they're going to see the rhinestones look like they're sparkling. It's that easy. Pretty cool, right? All right. Um, one other thing. Uh, can if I had a big. Okay. Um, sorry. I see you. I see you. Let me show you real quick. So someone just asked if I had just a. Our school uses a big letter like a B. How could I do a glitter and rhinestone design? Let me show you real quick. I'm just going to use an uppercase B here. And I'll probably do, I'm guessing it's probably more of an athletic font. So I will do a, one of our athletic fonts here. Let's find one here. That one's good. Or even the, like the college black. Boom. All right, here's my athletic B, right? Let's just say I'm gonna go seven inches tall off the start. Watch how easy this is. This is pretty cool, all right? We'll just say we're gonna do a uh, red. Let me go to a, a red cyan, boom. Watch this, I go to my magic tab. I want a stone outline with contour. Click on that and it's done. That added all of the stones, and it added the contour around the outside of it. And then what you could do if you wanted to, um, just to show you like different cool things you can do with the wizard, watch this. If I came over here, I'm just hitting Control Z to go back a bunch of steps. Let me just go back a bunch of steps, even though obviously an eagle isn't going to be in a B design, right? Let's just throw it at a weird angle here. You know what? Let's do this. Let's make it big, but kind of like this. Look at that. Is that pretty cool? You guys want to see what I did there? All I did is I just grabbed this. Um, here, let me see if I can do a bear. See if I can find a bear on my computer real quick. Do here and bear. Um, ooh, that one looks pretty cool. Ripping through it. I wonder what this would look like. 
So they're the bears, and we got the claws ripping through it. Let's see what this does. Shift click on that, do a knockout, and there we got the claws ripping through it. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? Um, yes, you can throw anything inside there. That's what's cool about it. Um, let me grab a... That's a te we don't want a teddy bear in there, I'm assuming. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's grab... This claw is pretty cool here. Let's grab this claw. It's like ripping out. Shift click on this. Oh, but first thing I do need to do is if it comes through like this with the white background too, you do need to get rid of that. Okay? Shift click and KO. And then we can have the claw ripping through that way. I kind of like the other look, the other claw better. I kind of liked this one better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see if we made it a little bit bigger, if what it looks like. Kind of coming through like that. Boom. And then I just click in KO. Yes. I... No, it's sweet, isn't it? Yeah, I like the first claw better, too. Agreed. Agreed. Um... It's, it's sick, isn't it? So, I'm telling you guys, literally... Let me flip around here. This is... What I showed you here... Honestly, is... Maybe... I, I, I don't even know if it's 5% of what the wizard can do. I don't even, I mean, I could literally, like I said, we had three weeks, no, we had more than that. Was it five weeks, six weeks worth of wizard trainings? There were like two hours a day, five days a week, and we still couldn't get through everything. Because there's so, now, that can be intimidating as well, and I understand that because there's so many things it can do. But <laughs> what I like to kind of show on these little lives like this is just to kind of give you an, an idea of what you would do. Does that make sense? Or what you could do, okay? Um, I saw somebody ask, yes, so this here, when you have a knockout design, here, let me flip back and show you, because I saw somebody ask, can you show the cuts now? Yes, I will, because that's a pretty big feature, right? So let's just say these colors are, I don't know, let's just say they're black and red, right? If I wanted to, what I would probably do is I would make the stones crystal, okay? And then I would make the claw, like maybe the outside black. And then maybe the claw coming through the red. What do you think? Do you like that? I mean, you could go multiple colors too. Like if I wanted to, I could have a gray. And it could be three colors or a silver. But... Just to let you know, when it does come to the cut file, what you would do is you would go to templates and then vinyl overcut. And look what it did. It automatically color separates everything for you. See that? So it, the software is smart enough to know not to mirror the rhinestones, but it automatically mirrors the heat transfer vinyl. And then those of you who use like a Cameo or a Cricut, you would just save this file as an SVG and bring it into your Cameo or Cricut. It's 
pretty sweet, right? Oh yeah. Um, yes, I'll save this. Let me go. I'll save it as the three color, and then you guys can decide what you want to do with it. All All Star members will get these files for free. We're gonna call this the B Claw. The B Claw design. Um, oh shoot, you know what? You're right, you're right. Dale, let me fix that. That's a great point. Um, my bad guys, I forgot I was still set on SS6 stones. Let me change it to SS10 stones for you. So, to do that, here's what I gotta do. I'm gonna copy my claw. Go back. Just have my B here. I'm gonna change this back to SS10. I always recommend SS10 stones. So, good there. And I'm going to go to my edit tab, or my magic tab. I'm going to do a stone outline with a contour. Now, inside area here, nope, that's fine. Oh, you know what? I got a piece on here from before. Let me make sure everything's deleted out. Okay. Got it. Yes, I'm making the SS10s for you right now. And you can adjust anything you want with the width, any of this stuff. Okay? All of that can be completely adjusted. So, I'm going there. And then I'm going to highlight. I'm going to clear my paths. I'm going to come in here. Just because I had that background in there. So, it tried to add a couple others. Because I didn't delete it out. Um, can't, ooh, that's a great question. Can you adjust? Yeah, I'll save it without the claw as well. Um, yes. Let me show you this. This is cool. So check this out. I know a lot of you probably don't know about this either. So when it comes to stones here, okay? These are my SS10 stones, all right? With the stones, if I wanted to adjust and fix some of my stones first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of any overlaps but like this part right here there's a couple different things i can do number one is if i click on each of those items okay and then i come down here and do a respace it's going to do that and then i can clear my path and it adjusted them now what if i wanted to add more stones I could do it this way as well. Watch, I could come over here and just do my two point line tool or my free hand pick tool or my B spline tool, right? I can go here. I'm going to boom, 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 and boom. And then magic respace, add a stone, and then delete. Everybody see how I did that? So instead of adjusting one stone at a time, watch. I went to my B spline tool. I'm going to start here, go to here, there, all the way down to here, to there, to there. Double click to finish it. And then watch. Magic respace. Add, hit the up arrow to add, 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 or delete, delete, delete. And then once you're done with it, you clear the path, and then it's perfect. So that's what you do when it comes to editing different stones. Yes, yeah, so the beast blind is creating a path for the stones to follow. That's exactly it, BY. Yes. Okay, so I saw a couple of you asked to save it as just the B. So I'm going to go export, and we're going to call this the... B design. Okay. And then I'm going to add my claw back in here. And we're going to have the claw design as well. Boom. Edit. KO. Oh, I went outside of that. Um yes all of this stuff so 
When you look, the biggest thing I always recommend for people is to look in your wireframe. See what you got going on in your design, okay? Your designs are always gonna have kind of different little hidden areas that you, like these little slivers and stuff, they're always gonna have different issues, okay? Um, Matt, can you do magic separator and save as a craft file for the Cricut users? Yes. Um, for which one, Pilar? For something like this? So here's what I would do with that. I would highlight my design, okay? For all, for all Cricut users, I would go to my templates and I would do the magic separator. All right, and now with the magic separator, it does this. And now these are the type of files that we make for all of you Cricut users. Does that make sense? And then what we normally do for all the Cricut users is we'll take this, we'll create a new page, and then we'll say, okay, this needs to be sized at 8.168 inches by 18.109. So 8.168 inches by 18 point, what was it? 18.109. Zero zero inches. Because all of you Cricut Design Space users, you know when you bring a file into Design Space, it gets all wacky and crazy. So this is what we'll normally do for Cricut users, to be able to bring the file in and know what to size it at. And the only reason why you have to do that with these is because you need to make sure the rhinestones are the right size. Does that make sense to everybody? So this is going to be the... B craft file. Got it. Sweet. All right. Flipping around here, answering some questions before we finish up here. What do you guys got for me? Um. Yeah, the I mean the wizard. Like I said, it's it's not inexpensive. Okay, but if you do this stuff and if you're trying to start a business or currently do a business or run a business, like literally what I was just going to say, Terry, Terry just said the wizard paid for itself within two months for me, which is amazing, right? Some of you, it might pay for itself within a week. Some of it may be two months. Some of you, it may be six months. But that's the thing when it, when it comes to the time involved with it. If it offsets the amount of time it takes you to create designs, create mockups, create order forms, all that stuff, and it saves you time, time is money. And if you're creating this many of this design, you're saving 30 minutes every time you create it. This saving this much time creating order forms, this much time creating mockups, and so on, it's eventually going to exactly that pay for itself. Uh, but do back my front so the stones are... Oh, that's a good point, Pilar. Let me show them. Um, for the craft file, yes. So they don't have to worry about... What it does is... What Pilar is saying is it makes it easier. So what I'll normally do as well with this is I will take all of these stones to make it a craft file, okay? I'll select all these stones here. I'll weld them together, shift click on the yellow and do a back minus front. And there you go. And now export it. And we're gonna do B craft file. Yes, good. Um, yes, order forms. Um, I'm not going to get into all of them today because that's literally like a who knows how many hour class. But just to kind of give you a quick idea, what I could probably do is 
Here, I'll just give you a quick, quick representation of it. Check this out. Got Grill Master here, right? If I came over to my mock-ups and I went to templates and I did an order form for one product, right? I'm gonna go to advanced. I don't have my logos and everything built in here right now, but I don't have stones. I don't need a watermark and background color. I'll make it, nah, we'll keep it as white for right now, okay? If I come over here and click on that order form right there, it's gonna say, okay, what product do I want? Well, I want a men's t-shirt front. And then it's gonna say, uh, men's t-shirt front product type, and it's a standard shirt size, all right? I'm gonna call it men's t-shirt front, that's fine. I could call it Bella, whatever you want. Select the design you want to go on the men's shirt. I'm gonna highlight that design and hit okay. And then how much do you want to charge for that shirt? We're going to charge 18 bucks. And I hit OK. And boom, there's my order form. What? Yeah, that's real. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. That's literally, that's how long it took to make my order form right there. And if I wanted to, like always, I could change my color to whatever I want. And then check this out. It has all of your custom information built into it. Your phone number, your email address, your website, your order deadline date, your logo will go right there. Here you get to enter a very, very cool and catchy shirt sale name, your business address, how much the shirt was. Yeah, it's sick. What? <laughs> That's a rabbit hole that goes a long ways right there. Okay, okay, I got one more thing for you, damn it. One more thing. <laughs> so check this out. Um, Heather, just give a call into the call center and they'll log on to your computer and walk you right through it. Because it's going to be different on all computers. Um, but check this out. Grill Master, watch this. This time I'm going to right click on the money sign. Okay? And it brought up this, my pricing breakdown assistant. All right, so what did you charge for the setup and design fee? Right, what is, what's the hourly rate of the employee handling the order? Okay, let's just say you didn't charge for a setup and design because it was design you already had. Retail price of this shirt is let's call it 19 bucks. What percent discount? I'm going to give them a 10% discount and they're going to be making it on a Bella shirt that's $3. Okay. Hourly rate of the production employee. Let's say they're making $12 an hour. How many minutes is it going to take them to produce each shirt? Well, if they're going to make, um, how many shirts are we going to be making here? Total quantity being produced. Let's say they're making 15 of these shirts. And because they're able to cut out multiples at a time and weed them and stuff, it's only going to take them eight minutes per shirt. Okay. What's your total overhead cost per month? And then how many on average products do you make a month? Okay. So when I come over here and hit price, watch what's going to happen. It breaks down all of my pricing for me. It tells you how much money you're going to make on this job, how long it's going to take you to do the job. Okay, um, how we're going to, your material labor and overhead cost, all right? How much your business is going to make an hour on this job, and then what your total margins are. Then what you can also do is fill out all this information, right? Let's say it's going to go on to a white shirt. Logo, we want an internal and external order form. And this is what it's going to give you. So this is basically an invoice, right? This one is going to the customer. It says what color glitter they're using, how big the design is, how much you're charging them, what discount you're giving them, what their total order is if there's tax or anything on it, which we have here, then you got what type of shirt they're getting and everything. 
but then what you also get with that is an internal pricing one. So with this one, it actually shows you how much you have in cost for heat transfer vinyl, how much you have in employee cost. So I always tell you, don't mix these forms up when you give them to your customer because if you give them the internal pricing form by mistake, they're probably going to want better pricing because they're going to see what your actual cost is, right? So don't mix them up. All right. Uh, if you want to see the quick, uh, yeah, the you, I'll answer all, all the questions on YouTube. Sorry, anybody that's on TikTok. I'm just showing it on TikTok there, but I'm flipping it around now. And flip around here. All right, what else we got? Any more questions? I got some videos. I got some videos to make. Uh, we don't have a pita box on that one, Eric. But it should be. We just put a P in the corner for the PETA. 100%. Yes. All right, crew. Hey. Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for coming by. Hopefully this gave all of you that have the wizard some more knowledge about the wizard. And then people who don't have the wizard. Um, the order form is only in the wizard software. Yes. Um, but also... Hopefully those of you who don't have the wizard that were wondering kind of different things that it could do for you Hopefully it kind of gave you an idea of what it can do. So does it mean that you're gonna get it? No, does it mean that it's in your budget? Not necessarily But at least now you kind of have an idea of what it can do and then decide down the road if it is in your budget or not, right? So TikTok appreciate all you guys. You guys have an amazing day and I will see you guys real soon. All right later YouTube, any questions, of course, give the call center a call. Appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for coming by for the training today, and I will see you guys real soon. TRW Release 65 is active right now, and I will get these free files into the All-Star membership as well. All right, crew, you guys have a great day. We'll see you guys soon.